Hey guys, welcome to Thoughts from the Pastor uh, for today. And man, there's so much I want to share, but I'm just going to focus on one topic, okay? One topic. And that's spending time in the presence of the Lord. Guys, I, I want to, to, to share with you what I believe is a deception of Satan. That Satan has been slowly influencing us. Um, <clears throat> and there's an aspect of this that is good, but there's an aspect of this that is that is bad. Okay, and, and, th and that's where I think Satan is. Okay, uh, and that is spending time in the presence of the Lord. Okay, so guys, I get that that my messages c can sometimes be long. When I preach, I can get long-winded. Uh, and even when my, my thoughts from the pastor can be long-winded. And I know people in this day and age are like, I don't have time. I don't have time for it. I don't have time for it. Um, and I get it. It's just me, okay? So it's not like you're spending time with God when you're spending time with me. But, 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 and listen to my, what I have to say, but I pray that as I pray about what I, what I'm supposed to share and, and as God puts the things on my heart and as I share it, that, that the spirit of the Lord uses it and that you take time, uh, even through thoughts from the pastor and even other pastors, as you're listening to them, that you're taking time to be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit as you listen. Okay. But what I see in our day and age that we, we are getting to a, a time where we're just like, Everything has to be shorter. Everything has to be quicker. Why? Because two things. One, we ha we're we busy at work. We're busy working. Why? Because we need the money. Okay? And then on the other side, when we're not working, we need rest. Right? So look at, look at what Satan's... Okay, so if there's like three circles, okay? If there's like three circles. I, I need a chart when I do this, but... Okay, and one is work... One is spending time with God. Okay, so spending time with God. Spending time, there we go, with God. Um, and the last one is rest, right? Uh, relaxation. Uh, let's say entertainment. Because it's, let's be honest, lots of times nowadays we rest with entertainment, okay? Okay, so so then if we have more and more kind of focus on work, work is gets busier and busier and busier, right? It 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 gets it gets it gets it gets larger, right? It gets larger and larger. So this circle's getting larger. And then because we're working so much, what do we do? Well, because we're working so much, we want to rest, right? And so then this, we want this to get a little bit larger too, right? And lots of times this can actually get so big that it crowds everything out and there's just a little bit of rest. Basically, after work today, I'm going home and sleeping because I'm just, I'm bushed. I'm tired, right? And Satan's just going like, okay, we need more, we need more, you need more, you need more, you need to work more, you need to, inflation's happening. So we're, we're actually making the same amount of money, but we're actually making, I think it was 11% this year. So we're, we're making, you know, if you make a thousand bucks, you're making 110 bucks less-ish, right? 11% is huge. If you're making 2000 bucks, that's $200 less. $3,000, three, $300, uh, $300 less, so to speak, okay? So we're making, we're making less. We need to work more. We need to, everything's costing more, inflation, right? And so if we want to do what we want to do, we want to have what we want to have, we need to work more, right? And so this work gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And the rest, because we're working more, we need more rest. And what gets, what gets crowded out, Right? What often gets, we keep the rest, no matter how big that is, sometimes it's smaller, sometimes it needs to get bigger too, because we were working bigger. The, what gets crowded out? Our time with God gets crowded out. Then, 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 so busy, 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 go, 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 no time for anything. Then we're kind of moving into with our phones, right? All of us are uh, kind of entering this augmented reality where, 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 where our phones are kind of making up the difference, Right? And so we're on our phones and, and our phones are, are we're, we're texting and now we're, we have little, you know, emojis, little images that kind of express all these, like, I'm kind of feeling sad today. Instead of having to say that, I can just put a little smiley face with a tear, or sad, sad face. People know oh, that means sad. Or if I'm super happy or if that's super funny, man, that's a super awesome, funny joke. I don't have to say all that. God forbid I'd have to say all that or text all that. And I agree, that's annoying. Uh, so I just put a little, emo a little emoji, a little e emoji, a little emoji, right? Uh, and it kind of says that all. And then we have these memes, and 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 so th what what we're doing is we're 
we're using images so that we have to say less. Why? Because it's faster. And then we're, we have all these videos, but none of us want to watch a video that's 30 minutes long or an hour long. So, so we're like breaking down messages from pastors into these like 30 second little clips. And I mean, they're good, right? But then it's just like, all we have time for are these 30 second little clips. And we'll watch for two and a half hours, these stupid 30 second little clips. But we have no time to actually, you know, watch a whole sermon. Uh, I know people complain in my church that I preach too long. God forbid they have to, you know, uh, sit for an hour and listen to a message. When I, and I think, what are we doing, guys? What are we doing, right? We're, uh, we're being deceived by Satan, and it's shaping even how we think that every six seconds there needs to be something different. Do you know that, like, in commercials and stuff like that, they're doing, um, and this is actually a while back already, so I don't even know now if it's, like, two seconds, but... To kind of to keep people's attention, the, the, the image has to change in some way. There has to be some sort of motion. There has to be something every six seconds. Because otherwise, because that's how people are going to, you're going to keep people's attention. Um, look at the video games. They're just, the graphics are so much better. But also there's a thousand more things going on, right? It wasn't just a little dude, Mario Kart going, or Pong. Bing. Pong. Bing. Pong. I mean, who would play that today? No, we need these 3D goggles on and it's just this whole world. And if you're, you know, if you're playing Pong, it would be like getting shot at with, with, by, by tanks, you know, moving tanks and in 3D on mountains and they'd be shooting. You know, a person would be like, just banging everything back, right? Like that's how it has to be nowadays. It just, everything has to be more. It has to be shorter, has to be faster, has to be greater, has to be more, 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 more. And yet God is calling for us to like, to like um, Psalms 46.10. Be still and know that I am God. Right? God's calling for us to say, he's calling to us and saying, come spend time with me. Come listen to me. Guys, do you know that the scripture, some of the scriptures, the books written in scriptures, the Old Testament, but as well as the New Testament, were some of the largest written works of their time i'm not saying there were the, that 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 there weren't other ones but in their time they were some of like like they were like larger than 90 percent, 95 percent of the other big long works of their time now we know there's apocrypha and those were long books and stuff like that too but compared to the literature of their time they were some of the largest writings think about paul by Paul's time, there were there were books and scrolls, larger, larger, larger texts. But Paul's writing were letters. the The books of the New Testament were letters, and if you look at other letters of that time, they were larger than like ninety percent of the letters, or even a greater amount than the letters. Like the the large majority of the letters written at that time, the books of the Bible were way bigger. Like think about Jude right? Jude uh, and like 2nd and 3rd John were like kind of the size of most letters in their day. And yet you think about Revelation and how huge that is. You think about Corinthians and Romans and even the Gospels. Guys, these were massive letters for their time. And why that's important? Because it would take time to read them and to pour over them. Think about Paul, guys, when he comes and he, he goes to a, a church, a home church, right? Paul, it says in the Word of God that Paul visited home to home. And what that means is he went from church to church, right? Because they were home churches. And he, what does he do when he's there? What does he do when he's there? He teaches and he preaches. Remember, Paul's traveling and he goes to, I forget, I forget exactly where it is, where it was, but he, he preaches all evening until until late and that kid falls out of the root room right i mean he falls out of the window and dies right and then paul raises him back to life they go back in and he preaches till morning guys spending time with god we're living in a time where i think satan is making things so fast and so quick and now we we, we have these little shorts Right, we have these little shorts and these reels and shorts and clips and ticky talk. 
picture thingy do's right where it's just like it's just seconds it has to be seconds and then you have to move on guys when your mind gets into that processing of it's just seconds and everything else is boring i feel like satan's doing that on purpose because although god wants us to be throughout the day kind of like our being our phone where we're always checking up with him in prayer we're always we're always asking him about what's going on we're we're always kind of connected to him he's he's like the phone in our hand right and we're always like okay lord what are your thoughts on this and two minutes later oh lord god hey that's that person i want to pray for that person lord you know kind of like that he god wants to be that to us through the Holy Spirit, by the person of Jesus Christ who lives within us and walks with us, right? We want to be constantly going to Jesus and saying, what is your will? What is your way? All authority has been given to him. So we're walking with Jesus as we're connected with God, as the spirit of the living God lives in us. We're supposed to be. But now, guys, we don't, we don't do that. Why? Because Satan has put a phone in our hand. It's kind of like the little antichrist Holy Spirit. And we're always going to the phone. We're always connected to the phone and seeing what's going on little men and we're like but this is good it's a message to my mom it's a message to my dad it's a message to my brother it's a message to the other christians in my in my small group it's a this it's a that but is it really that good because are we turning to the holy spirit as much as we're turning to our phones are we taking time to slow down and to stop to such a place that i am still in thinking and in heart and feeling I'm still, and I'm just focused on the presence and the person and the power of God, that I'm, I'm before him in humility because of the reverent fear of God that I have, and I just, I'm just quiet and stopping and saying, God, you are God. You are God. Guys, that takes time. It takes time. That takes time. Right. Um, Hebrews 4, let me read some, some scripture to you guys here. Hebrews 4, 9 to 11 says, There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their their example of disobedience, and it's talking about the Israelites, that even though God was with them, think about the time when, um, and I, I should have, I should have all this in scripture. I don't forgive me. Uh, I want this not to be too long, but, um, mm, but um, there was a time when God's like, no one touches the mountain, only Moses comes. And if anything touches the mountain, even a sheep or a cow or whatever, it gets slaughtered. It's going to be killed with an arrow. But then there was a time when God God welcomes them to come up and to prepare to meet the Lord. And they say to Moses, the people say to Moses, no, 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 Moses, you go. You go. You have a special connection to God. And we're going to stand here and we're going to watch you go. And then once you go up, we're going to turn to our own things. And that's exactly what they did. And then even afterwards, there's this, there's this kind of custom where, where the men would stand at the front of their tents and they would watch Moses go in. And actually Joshua, the only other man in the camp that was willing to go and willing to enter into the presence of God. And even though others could, anyone could, they don't. They're, they're okay for Moses to, to do the God stuff. Moses does that and we'll honor him. But we're not willing to take that. Why? Because why, why do you think? Because they were human. They had things to do. They had other stuff to engage in. Just sitting in the presence of God and waiting for God to show up. Uh, who would want that? Let Moses do that. Guys, in, in our churches, uh, I think um, there's a bit of a deception. I'm going to talk about this next next week, maybe, for our thoughts from the pastor of the week after. But that it should be the pastor that does the ministry of the church. And let's face it, in many churches, the pastor is the ministry of the church, which is not biblical at all. But yet there's such a strong pull that people think, well, no, that's biblical. It's not. Read your Bible. It's not, your, it's not biblical. The pastor shouldn't be doing all the ministry of the church and shouldn't be the ministry. He ministers in the church as the word of God calls, to be constantly in prayer and engage in the ministry of the word, to be equipping the saints for their works, their works of ministry. 
But why don't people take the time to just rest with God so that they can they can have a, a, a relationship with God where they can hear from the Lord, where they can be comforted by the Spirit personally, where they can, you know, find that rest. The, the truth is, because a lot of people want to grow in Christ, but they want to stay somewhat immature in Christ because that takes time. It takes time, and it's time that I don't want to spend. I'm not willing to go there, right? Uh, Psalms 127 and, and 2 says, In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. Like people are engaged and toiling and trying to get more and trying to, you know, money and, and wealth and and even just making it happen. Like, you know, we just need to make the payments. We just need to. And part of the problem is I think that we're not, we're crowding out our time and space with God. And then we have this whole other bombardment from Satan where things have to be fast and quick. Otherwise, we don't have time for it. And we're not, we're, we're not training ourselves as the word of God calls us to just spend time in the presence of God, to spend time in the presence of God, right? We get anxious and we get excited and we like, no, but we need to do this. And we forget who provides for us. Yes, we live in a fallen world, so it's going to take sweat. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food, right? That's from the curse back in Genesis. We get that, Genesis 3. We get that. It's going to take work, but... Who ultimately, who do you believe? Truly, 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 who do you believe ultimately provides for you? Sister or brother in Christ, who ultimately provides for you? Who will make sure that you have everything you need? And the truth is, most of us, if we're really honest, we believe, well, I, do, I will, I am, I do, I provide for our family. That's who provides, Right? And if we want the things we want, and that's another thing that's not right, then I'm the one that has to work for it. And I'm the one who has to make the bills and I have to hide the side hustle and I have to have this and this and this and I need to do this. But the reality is, no, that guys, that's, that's the secular way of the world. That's how the world thinks. That's not how we're supposed to think. Yes, there is time for us to work, but we don't need to, to crowd out time with God and a training and in training our hearts to be silent before before the Lord and to be still and to know that my Jesus is God and my Jesus walks with me and all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. And if he wanted to, my Jesus could give me ten thousand ten million dollars in my bank tomorrow. He could. He could do something like that and I could have ten million dollars in my bank. He hasn't done it. I think he knows I think I know why he hasn't done done that for me. Number one, it would be gone fast. I would blow money like crazy. I would give it to so many. The other person, the other day, I was like, you know, if I ever got a bunch of money, I would give about 500,000 or a million bucks to this person because I love them so much. And my wife's like, why would you give them that much? Like, that's crazy. And I'm just like, I just would. That's, <laughs> it would be gone so fast. 10 million would be gone so fast. Anyway, and then, and yeah, like, and that, and I would buy a nice truck and I'd buy some things for myself too, which would like, don't try to, I'm not a, some sort of saint. I'm still, I'm still in need of Jesus like everyone else. But, um, there is that I would blow it fast. Um, but God can do that for you. Do you believe that God can do that for you? And that there's a reason he hasn't. Do you believe that? God can do that. He can do anything. He's the one that provides for us. Yes, we work. And yes, we have a responsibility to, to work. But we also have to be careful that we're not being pulled along by the, the spirit of our culture, thinking we're the ones in charge. So then, And if we want what we want, then we're the ones that have to make it happen. We have to work more and work more and work more. And then I need to rest more and rest more because I'm working more. And then what gets crowded out is Jesus. Or that idea that everything has to be faster and faster and faster. And what gets crowded out is this calling that God calls us to come and just rest in me. Rest with me. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition. That takes time. Guys, the kind of prayer that, and kind of time spent with God that he longs with you isn't, okay, read two verses of a quick daily bread in the morning and then go do your own thing. Feeling good about, oh, I did my Jesus thing because I, I read two verses. And I read a little, you know, 
a 30 second little blurb about him. Guys, that's not time with God. He calls for us to come and spend time with him, resting in him, connecting to him. Right? Are we doing that? Are we doing that? Is that where we're at? And it says that if we do this, if, if we take this time to, 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 to petition God and to pray towards God with thanksgiving, presenting our requests to God, like taking this time, and we do that through Jesus Christ, right? Because it's all about Jesus. We put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That's how we're connected to the Father is through Jesus Christ, by the presence of the Holy Spirit, by faith in Jesus Christ, back to Jesus. And it says that the peace of God which transcends all understanding, and that's the God of the God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. This is this is talking about the triune God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So if we're not doing this first thing, the second part won't happen. If we're not being anxious, if we're being anxious about nothing, and in every situation, but are praying and taking things to God, no matter how busy we are, no matter how stressed we are, we're like, no, 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 no. I have set up my day so that I have time with God. And when something big comes up, I stop what I'm doing and I have time with God. And it's not that I'm being lazy. It's that I recognize who's in absolute authority over this. And it's not my boss and it's not the government and it's not the, the paycheck at the end of the month. That's not, who, that's not who's in absolute authority. God the Father is in absolute authority. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's where the authority of God exists and, and resides in this universe. It is with God. It's with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And then when I recognize that, there is peace with God. That transcends all understanding. When people are going, well, how do, Well, that doesn't work. Well, how would you? You can't run a business that way. You can't work that way. You can't. When you just, nope, stop. I'm going to go. I need to pray. I need to spend some time with God. That's what I need to do. I'm cutting out places in my life where, where I need to spend time with God and find His rest. I need to trust that He is going to provide. Exodus 28 uh, and 9 says, Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. And this is in the Old Testament. On it you shall do not do not you shall not do any work, neither you, you nor your sons or your daughters, nor your male or, or, or female servants, nor your animals, nor any foreign, uh, res, uh, re, foreigners residing in your towns, right? So God, God like built in Sunday as a day of rest, the Sabbath day to rest. And what are we supposed to do with the Sabbath? We're supposed to use it for his glory. We're supposed to use it to draw near to him, right? To remember that he is God, that he is in control, Right? But guys, it's not only the Sabbath. Through Jesus Christ, we've entered, we've entered into that relationship with God so that we can rest in God and have peace with God day by day. But we need to be spending time with God, recognizing Satan's pull to, to make things faster and faster and faster and to crowd out our time with God. And then number two, to make things more like in, in terms of mind and heart, even how we think to be fast, fast, quick, quick, short, short, so that we can't... It's hard for us to stop and just to spend time with God and to meet with him and to be on his schedule and not our schedule just to rest and wait on God we need to be doing that we need to be doing that Christian if you're in love with God if you're in love with Jesus today I want to ask yourself are you I want you to ask yourself are you allowing the work and the rest to crowd out your time with with Jesus Christ are you allowing the, the shaping of our culture, the shaping of our minds through, through the, the internet and through the phones and through our culture pushing this, in, this technology on us? And there's good things in it. I'm not saying it's, it's completely bad, but are you, letting it to sh are you allowing it to shape your mind in such a way that you're actually being deceived and not realizing it, even ignorantly, um, um, shaping your mind so that more and more it becomes harder and harder to actually Spend time with God, to rest in Him, to find peace in Him, to wait on the Lord, right? Uh, the Word of God, Matthew 6, uh, 33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. That seeking takes time. Are you willing to take that time? Do you take that time day by day to seek after God first and His righteousness? 
to seek after his will and way. That's not a, 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 a 30 second quick little prayer. We need to be doing 30 second quick little prayers throughout the day. But taking time to be in the presence of the Lord and seeking him takes time. Right? It takes time. Are you taking that time? First Chronicles 16.11 says, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continuously. Are you engaged in that? Or are you letting the kind of the culture shape your mind? Guys, take time to be with Jesus. Take time to be still. Still your mind. Still your hearts. Guys, in our day and age, sometimes that takes days. Sometimes that takes days. Cut that out for your next holidays. Take a couple days to be still and to know that God is God. Take time each day. Slow it down. Slow it down. Spend time with God. David talks about being in the presence of God. Right? And he's just longing for it, to be in his house. I love your house. I love being in the presence of God. This is what he says. Um, it says, uh, Psalms 26, just one of the places, 6 and to 8. I, I wash my hands in innocence and go about your altar, Lord. So he's in, the pre he's, in the, he's in the altar. He's in the temple. Proclaiming aloud your praise and telling of all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house where you live, the place where your glory dwells. See, in the Old Testament, the Spirit of the Lord God resided in the, in the Holy of Holies in the temple. That's where the presence of the Lord could be felt, could be connected to. Uh, through Jesus Christ and what he has done, praise the Lord, right? That, that when Jesus Christ died and rose again on the third day, the veil was, swept, was ripped and there was this new um, covenant with man. There's this new dispensation of God's working with man that now, by faith in Jesus Christ, you will receive the Holy Spirit. So when we repent of our sin and put our faith in Jesus Christ, recognizing that Jesus Christ is the Lord of our lives, not me anymore, but Jesus Christ, not Satan, not sin, Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. And, and that I recognize that he saved me from my sins, that by his death, I am healed. By his death, I am forgiven. And then the spirit of God is given to me by faith in Jesus Christ. And I walk in obedience to Jesus, right? Getting baptized, reading his word, obeying everything that Jesus has talked, called me to, right? I'm engaged in doing that because of my love for him, for what he's done for me freeing me from my sin, taking my place on the cross, okay? That as I walk in that, and as I, as I engage in that, that the Spirit of God now is actually in me, and that I am connected to Jesus by the presence of the Spirit of God. I don't need to go to the temple anymore, right? David had to go to the temple to be in the, to, to, to recognize and to be in the presence of God. But now in Jesus Christ, the presence of the God lives in me. We are temples of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit connects us to Jesus Christ, Who's, who, 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 who connects us to the Father. And our relationship with God has now been restored by faith in Jesus Christ and by walking by faith in Jesus Christ. And so then I can go and I can be in the presence of the Lord whenever I, I get rid of the distractions of this world and I quiet my heart and I quiet my mind and I say, Lord God, I desire to be in your presence. Right? And through prayer and through, through God's word, I, I, I seek the presence of the Lord. Guys, we can have that now. Something that David couldn't do just wherever. We can now. But guys, if we're taking no time for it, it shows a couple things. Number one, it shows how influenced we are by the culture around us. God forgive us. And then two, it also shows us how much we value and treasure this incredible thing that Jesus has done for us. And this incredible person of the Holy Spirit of God who lives within us that connects us to Jesus Christ and to the Father. Guys, if we don't take time for him, let's not pretend that we love him all that much or that he matters all that much or that he is such a great treasure. The things we treasure are the things we engage in, right? The things that we, we work towards. And oftentimes that's money, that's wealth, that's our next holiday, that's our next big toy, that's I get that. But it shouldn't be that, guys. It should be spending time in God's presence. That's what we need to treasure. I pray, I pray that as you kind of evaluate your life, you recognize there's a lot of time I spend 
just being bombarded by stuff that I think I have no time for God. And that's not true. God, forgive me. And that you repent. And you say, God, change me. And give me the courage and give me the wisdom to change the things in my life where I'm, I'm taking time to spend with you. Guys, I don't want to go any further. Uh, take more, any more of your time. Spend time with God. Spend time with God. Recognize if you've been deceived in this area. Put away the phone. Put away all the stuff. And just be okay with hearing from the Lord as you listen to preachers and teaching. As you, as you just take time even to listen to God's word. I'm not saying your phone is evil. But don't let Satan use it for evil in your life. Right? Be okay with, with, with spending a little bit more time with God. Let's be okay with listening a little longer to God's word listening to God's preachers, maybe one or two even a, a week. Take time. It's okay for us to take time learning and growing in Christ. Let's not be conformed to the patterns of the world, but let's be transformed by the renewing of our mind as we sit and seek the presence of God, knowing, number one, He's the one that ultimately provides for us, and number two, that my ultimate treasure should be being in His presence. So then I pray continuously, and I take time daily to just get rid of the things of the world and spend time with God. Guys, have a great and God-filled week as you intention this Christmas to spend time with him.